As we've had the wettest winter on record, what impact is that having on our farmers? I'm not that brave, I'm not going to go through that bit. That looks a bit, that looks a bit too deep for me. Andy Crow, aka Crowman, is at least four weeks behind fertilising his wheat and rape crops. At this critical growing phase, it could have a serious impact on his yield. We grow million wheat here, and if you don't put the fertiliser on at the right time, it's like you won't get the protein, and that's what it's all about. You get 13% protein, you, you're laughing, he says, but the price has just gone because we're importing wheat, the wheat, and that's coming from other countries. So, and that's what's killing it here, really. There's a 48 hour window for him to carefully navigate his waterlogged fields to get that all important nitrogen in the ground. How do you feel about this time of year? What is, what's, what's it usually mean to you? It's the best time of the year. It's, it's the start of everything, really. You've done the sowing, you're working now right the way through to your harvest, feeding it, looking after it, and then uh, start the harvest. And you can't wait to get in the last field, and then when you get in the last field, you, you wished it wasn't the last field. It's the same with everything you do. You, you, your ambition is to, to get to the next field, to get to get the next job done, and, and then when it's all done, you, you feel lost. It, it, takes you, <laughs> it takes you a few weeks to, to wind down, or it does me. But I'm just so passionate about my job, I just love this job. The fertiliser is not a liquid, but pellets, distributed with the inch-perfect accuracy of an Andy Murray backhand. Where it's blue now, you know you've done. Yeah, where it's blue, I've done. How wide is it going? 24 metres it spreads. So that's everything standardised to 24 metres, is it because of your yeah, tram lines? You could, yeah, that's, that's what I... So I'll switch yourself off now, because it's hit blue? Yeah. Automatically? Yeah. Wow. And then you, if you watch it now, you see that you see these green up in a minute. When I get up onto here, you see it slowly come on. There you go. Uh -huh. You missed a bit there, Craig. What are we going to do with that? That's around the telegraph pole. Uh -huh. I don't want to crop around the telegraph pole. With costs in the region of £180 per bag, it's half what it was a few years ago. It's in Andy's best interest to ensure the fertiliser stays on the field. I wouldn't even be going through with normal tyres, you'd be getting stuck. The tyres are making today possible, but they're not cheap. About 22, about 22 grand. What? Tyres and rims. What? Yeah, about 22 grand. Another wet bit. It's mental, isn't it? 22,000 pounds for these, for a set of... Wheels and tyres. Wheels and tyres. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm, it is well. Could you go crazier than that, or is that sort of, that's it, high end anyway? Yeah, uh, it'd go a little bit crazier. But these, I like Michelin's. I'm a lover of Michelin's, but they're a bit like hen's teeth, they are trying to get older Michelin tyres. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. It's just a, a shortage of Michelin tyres. That's why we had to wait for so long for this tractor. Cut the corner on this bit, I think. Andy selects which parts of the farm to do, depending on the load he's carrying. He saves the softest part until last. I know this field's really wet down the other end. That'd be enough to go through the wet bit and then back up. Um, so I'm going to go down, down to the bottom now, just do the wet bit with hardly anything in there. So. I don't want to be getting stuck. Andy knows he's lucky to have a crop that's looking half decent when others are looking at muddy puddles. <laughs> 